Okay, so we are here today to talk about two Adelaides. And I um, apologize for my dress, I'm in sports fan mode today. But I um, wanted to talk through what is uh, going on with some of these Adelaides and, and why they're different. So this is gonna be a shoe battle between the George Cleverly and the um, Loke Trinity. So let's take a look at these shoes. So this is your Loke Trinity, right? And this is your George Cleverly. So these both are, um, they're both Adelaides, okay? Now, so an Adelaide, let me tie this here so that uh, it works out well. So um, an Adelaide is a U-throat shoe. Now the most common, so the U-throat is this right here. The most common has a cap toe on it. They don't all have cap toes. Some have cap toes, some have plain toes, some have wing tips, and some have like a cap with a peak on it, okay? Um, so just a lot of different variety for this. Some have heel caps, some have heel caps with a peak, some have heel caps that are just plain, okay? So this is a cap toe. This has a plain heel cap. Now, this has an almond shape last, okay? So think of that as being the shape of an almond. And the Cleverly is best known for its chisel last. So just like a chisel with that angle, it's gonna be there. And of course it has that angle here as well, which is typical Cleverly style. So uh, it's a, um, it really is a great looking shoe. It has um, some really good um, details on it um, and, and some things to look at. So first things first, the, uh, let's look at the stitch density. So if you look at the stitch density on the Adelaide, um, on the Cleverly here, okay, the stitch density is, the stitch density here, we're gonna look per centimeter. It's one, two, three, four, five per centimeter. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the log and this, do it the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six per centimeter. Now that's interesting, right? This is the top of the line log. Cleverly, this is a, these Cleverly's are part of their ready to wear collection, uh, mostly considered to be made by Crockett and Jones. And Crockett and Jones uh, is known as, as doing some great, great work. But here at the stitch density, there is an additional stitch per inch on the lokes, at least on the cap. Now, if I look at the, stitches elsewhere, uh, they seem to be about the same on both shoes. So definitely uh, something that's there. So it's a toss up, right? You have the stitch density is coming on very, very similar on the shoes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the top stitch of the welt, right? So this is this area right at the top here and I have my little measuring tape. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at centimeters one centimeter, and this has three stitches per centimeter. Okay, so that's, that's actually really good. And then let's take a look here at the Cleverly, um, which is manufactured at Crockett and Jones, also three stitches per centimeter. So again, very, very fine welt. Now, if we look at the soles themselves, this is where you're gonna start seeing some difference. And I've got some pictures that I'm gonna load in here with here so that you can see the, um, the detail on this. But it doesn't take a very high quality video to see the difference between this sole, okay? And we're just looking at the sole now, so I'm gonna leave the heels out of picture, and that sole, okay? There's a pretty darn big difference here. Now, have I worn this as much? No, I have not, right? So there is a difference, but you can see this has a much more fiddleback waist, it has a much thinner waist. The sole itself is um, a little bit nicer. It has the double rows of nails at the top. And of course, this is a blind stitch sole, meaning that you don't see the groove 
uh, that you see on the regular Goodyear welted stole. Now this has a beveled waist. So look at the difference between that. This looks like the back of a violin. This looks like it's bowed a little bit, okay? So a little bit of a difference, but that's not to say that this is poor quality. This is the best quality of shoe that Loke makes. So um, this is part of their export grade uh, and a fine shoe. Now, as I said before, Cleverly, um, which um, most people think is made at the Crockett and Jones factory, but it's a Cleverly design, right? It's not the same, uh, is, um, is, is very, very well made. And, and you know, it also costs a few, few hundred pounds more, right? So, um, so that's, that's, a, uh, that's a difference. Now, you'll notice that as you look at these two shoes, there are uh, a couple of other really glaring differences. First, this is a very smooth leather, so it's much dressier because this is a pebble grain. Okay, and I'm just making sure that you can see the pebble grain. Pebble grain goes all the way through. Now there's a couple design differences, uh, other than the fact that this last is this really sharp chisel last. This has a medallion, okay? Medallions are not that common on cap toe Adelaides, but this does a really nice job with the medallion. And candidly, I thought the medallion would look really weird against a pebble grain shoe, and it doesn't. It looks really, really sharp. Now you look at it here, smooth leather, no medallion, even a larger cap, um, and, and that's gonna be different. Now, this is a size 10. This is a size nine and a half. If we look at them, and here I'll, I'll, I'll do the same shoe so that they go up next to each other. I put them on, you can see there is a difference in length on the shoe, right? This one happens to fit me perfectly. Now what's interesting, is as I look at the shoe compared to where the, um, where the length actually is, right? um, if I look at the ball of the shoes, this is the balls pretty tightly next to each other. That, that's a very small difference. Now, really a nine and a half to a 10 is a very small difference, but that's, that's the difference that you see there. Now, this really illustrates how much longer the cap is on this. And a lot of people consider long caps um, more elegant but that is a difference. Now this also has some nice marbling in the leather and it's just a very, very high quality leather so that the light reflects off of it differently. I polish it with different colors to do that. This is not a museum calf shoe. So something to point out there. So again, the sole, big difference. Let's look at the heel. So the heel itself, this heel is tapered in this way toward the waist, but here, it's also tapered to a little bit finer point. Now, this is not a woman's shoe where it's, you know, a stiletto, right? But it is, um, it is slightly tapered. So let's take a look here. And that is not tapered at all, nor, but it is a little tapered this way because this waist does get fairly narrow. Now, it's not as narrow, not by a mile, but it is still a narrow waist. So in the great shoe battle, and the difference between a 360 pound shoe and a 549 pound shoe, I still choose the 549 as being higher quality. Uh, however, stitch density is higher on the Loke. And the, um, the, the material itself, the actual leather, I feel is of comparable quality. If anything, I would say even the lining on the Loke is softer. And so that may make it more comfortable. So it's hard to, hard to think about that. Certainly something that everybody should consider and um, something that I wanted to point out. Now, why do I wear a nine and a half and a 10? Um, let's, let's think about this for a little while. I have relatively wide feet. In some brands, I'm able to actually fit my foot into the nine and a half, like Loke, like Barker, like Jay Fitzpatrick. And other brands like Crockett and Jones, I can't. If I put my foot into the shoe in a nine and a half, my foot length may not actually fit or may fit, okay? But my width, it actually um, cramps my foot. So the ball of my foot cramps if I try to stand up and walk around, which is no way to wear your shoes, 
right? So that is a, that is a pretty big difference. Um, I actually will do a video on sizing uh, where I want to spend some time talking about the Pont de Paris, uh, which is the measurements that they use in Europe, the 44, the 44 and a half uh, for my size, and um, a little bit of discussion on how that translates into measurements. Uh, because for me, um, that makes the, the big difference. My feet are 28 and 27.9 centimeters long. Um, and so that uh, has a significant difference on what I can wear. Now, most tens are 28 centimeters long. Um, for the design of the shoe, they may make, like if it's a chisel toe, they may make it a little longer, et cetera. But that's, that's part of what they do in the design. So something to uh, consider as you're, as you're looking at shoes is actually the measurement of your feet. And then there are four um, circumferences that you need to look at. The ball of your foot in the middle of your foot, which is your, um, where your uh, width is. Okay? And then your instep, which is up at the top of your foot, and then your ankle to the top. Um, and those are, um, those are your uh, deep measurements. So anyway, uh, in the great shoe battle between the Loke Trinity and the George Cleverly Adam, it's very close. If I was doing this per dollar, per pound, the Loke is a better shoe. But overall, the Cleverly is a better shoe. It's a better design. It's something that I like better, but it's 200 pounds more against a 360 pound shoe. I think about that for a second. That is a very large percentage. And that's why pound for pound, the Loke Trinity wins the shoe belt. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.